This video is a small live coding demonstration of Java server pages for a Java web programming course that I'm teaching. And what's in front of me here on the screen is a simple kind of hello world uh, web application. Uh, so it's got this greeter servlet that using an annotation I have mapped to the path slash greet. And uh, all it does is it gets the parameter name from the request and if there isn't one, says decides it's going to be world, and it writes out hello followed by that name. So hello uh, Fred, if I say name is Fred, or hello world. And there's some code in here from a previous video where I showed how you could uh, get the session which would cause Jetty to set a ses session cookie. What we're going to do here is we're going to do a little demonstration of writing a very, very simple web application using JSP. And I'm going to show how JSPs are compiled into Java servlets. And I'm going to uh, show how we can forward from a servlet to a JSP. If you were building something more complicated, a bigger web application, and you wanted to do your templating on the server side in Java, you'd probably use something like Java Server Faces that has more of an idea of a component. If you wanted to do your templating on the client, actually in the browser in JavaScript, you might use something like AngularJS directives. Uh, in the course, we'll also discuss those. Uh, but JSP is a very, very simple, straightforward uh, example of templating to begin with that we're going to demonstrate here. So what I'm going to do, uh, the application we're going to develop is just going to be a, a simple kind of message posting service. We're going to assume that we've got some rooms and we might want to post a message that relates to each of those rooms. We might want to be able to view a message that relates to each of those, uh, each of those rooms. Um, the other files that are worth mentioning here is I've already put in web.xml and web.xml uh, has very little in it except this metadata complete equals false tag which will prompt Jetty or Tomcat uh, to check for annotations on classes to find its servlets and their servlet mappings. And there's also a build.gradle uh, because I'm going to use Gradle to run this. And my build.gradle has apply plugin Java to apply the Java plugin because we're writing Java code apply plugin WAR for building web archives, and it also applies this uh, Gretty plugin from GitHub, uh, which gives me an app run target that will uh, automatically compile and launch my uh, web application using Jetty and will watch for changes to my source code. And if I change my source code, it will automatically recompile and relaunch my web, web application. So first of all, I'm just going to create two JSPs. So let's create one for creating the message. Uh, so let's create create message.jsp. And let's give it an HTML5 doc type. HTML tags. And let's just put this is the create form JSP in there. So we won't actually put the real code in there yet. And let's create another one, which is view message dot JSP. Again, doc type is HTML, HTML tags, and this is the view message JSP. So already I should be able to go over to my terminal and this is in the project directory and I'm going to do that Gradle app run target. And after a moment Gradle will start and it should compile and launch this web application that has almost nothing in it uh, in Jetty. Enabling hot deployment with interval of one second, logging initialized, Jetty 9.1 starting up, and there it is. It's, it's up and running at localhost 8080 JSP proj. And so if I now go across to a web browser, and uh, here's my web browser, and I've got the developer tools open in case I make any mistakes in the video so that I can debug them quite quickly. And JSP proj, and I said it was uh, create message.jsp. 
and it compiles it. This is the create form JSP and there should also be one for view message JSP. This is the view message JSP. And already, even though there's nothing in there, I can go and show you that JSPs compile to be Java code and they compile to be Java servlet. So let's go across to Finder and this is the project directory and because I'm doing this using Gradle, there's a build directory and here server based uh, Jetty 9, that's Jetty 9's working directory and if I click in there, web apps exploded and go through lots of directories, here we have some Java files that Jetty has now created. And let's have a look in the create message JSP. And let's just go quick look. And here is the Java it's generated. Public final class create message JSP extends and it extends this HTTP JSP base from Jasper runtime, but that eventually uh, extends from HTTP servlet. And we can go down here and we can see there's this met method here, public void underscore JSP service that takes a request and the response. And here we can see where it declares various variables that are by default of in, uh, in scope and available in my JSP. And then here's the try and we can see where it does out dot write of all of the bits of text that I put into that page. Let's go and put a simple JSP tag in there just to demonstrate that part works. So this is the view message JSP and uh, the time now is sent equals new java.util.date and let's save that and we'll go back to the browser and we'll reload and you can see it's quite late in the evening that I'm recording this. Uh, but if we now go back across to the finder and we can see that, um, uh, let's have a look. This should have updated. It's not updated because I'm looking at the wrong file, of course. So, okay, let's close that one and let's look at the correct file. Quick look. And here we have the code it's put in. And we can see the HTML gets written in in out.writes. And we can see that uh, the time now is, and the part that was in the percent equals is just put straight into an out.print. Uh, let's put in some scriptlets. Let's change that to say, uh, to say is one, sorry, this is going to be a very contrived example, is one bigger than two. And then let's say percent if one bigger than a two open curly brace bold yes it is and then uh, next scriptlet close the curly brace else bold no isn't. And last scriptlet to close that curly brace. Save that. Go back to our browser and let's reload view message. And sure enough, is one bigger than two? No, it isn't. Um, and so sure enough, the, the second part of the else is what gets executed. But if we go into the code uh, for that it's generated for the servlet, we should see that it's just put those statements uh, straight into the JSPs, uh, com uh, into the servlets uh, Java that it's generated. So let's go back to the finder. And sure enough, down here, here is my if one is bigger than two statement and some out.writes that won't get executed because, of course, one isn't bigger than two. And then there's the else and there's the out.writes that do get executed because we go through the else uh, branch. So that, that already shows very, very simply how JSPs compile to be servlets. Now let's go back and let's start actually writing our little application. So what we want uh, in create message, uh, we, we'd like to have a little form. So let's put in a form tag and this is going to be incredibly, incredibly basic. Um, let's put in a label room and an input 
type is text, name is room, and underneath let's put a text area for the message. And underneath let's put button type is submit. Submit. And let's save that and go to create message. And oops, I've got something wrong in my HTML. Let's go back over here. What have I got, got wrong in my HTML? missing the forward slash that turns that into a close tag. Let's reload that. Okay, room and message. And at the moment, if I were to put something into there and I hit submit, I'll, I should just get this form straight back again. Uh, why? Because by default, it's going as a get request to the same URL because I haven't specified a method and I haven't specified an action. So let's specify that the method should be post and let's specify that the action should be to create message. Now if I reload this and I put something in, I should get a not found because I haven't mapped anything to the URL that I'm about to post this to. Click submit, not found. Sure enough, okay, everything's going kind of as I expect at the moment. Now let's uh, create the servlet where that's going to be posted. So let's go up to here and new Java class and we will call this the post message servlet. This servlet receives messages that we post. And we're going to extend HTTP servlet And we're going to override the do post method because this is going to respond to posts. And that is past the request and it is past the uh, response object. And these throw IO exception serverless exception. Okay, lots of things there and lots of things to import, which IntelliJ will happily automatically import for me. And what I'd like to do is I would like to get the room, I would like to get the message, and I would like to store the message for that room. Okay, I need somewhere to store it. Now, because this is a trivial example, I'm just going to store this in a singleton that's just going to live around in memory between requests. And uh, let's go and create that. So let's create a new class, and I'm going to call it data store. And this is going to be a singleton, which means there's only ever going to be one of these. And uh, I'm not going to worry about creating it on demand. I'm just going to say private static final data store instance equals new data store and then I'm going to create a method public static data store get instance return instance okay so what am I going to have in my data store well let's just have a map from string to string um, which is the messages and yep, java.util.map. And because web applications are concurrent and this could be called on multiple threads at the same time, I would like this to be a thread safe data structure. So let's get, create a new concurrent hash map, string string. Uh, now I need a method to put a message in, public void put message of 
string room string message messages dot put of room message and I need a method to get a message back out again. So public string get message return messages dot get of room. And I'm just going to leave my data store at that. So incredibly, incredibly simple. And I'm going to go back to my post message servlet. And so get the room. Well, let's just get that from a request parameter for the moment. So request dot uh, get parameter of room. And so call that string room. And string message equals request dot get parameter of message. And now what do I want to do down here? Data store dot get instance dot put message of room message. So that's going to store my message, but I haven't worked out what I'm going to send back to the uh, back to the client yet. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to show how you can forward from a servlet to a JSP. Uh, so really, the output from this servlet, because it's going to be some HTML, I didn't really want to write it in servlet code, because writing HTML in servlet code is a pain. So I'm going to write my output in uh, HTML in a JSP, and I'm just going to forward uh, the result to it. And so let, let's create a new JSP for this, and let's call it um, message posted. And it's just going to go doc, doc type HTML again. HTML. Your message for room and I'm just going to uh, let's put that in because that's easy to spot to remind me that I'm going to fix that up later has been posted and let's pop back to the message servlet and now we are going to uh, forward the response to it so we're going to say request dispatcher rd equals request dot get request dispatcher for a particular path which is message posted dot JSP and then we're going to go request dispatcher dot forward of the request and we're going to pass it the request and the response so hopefully after I fill in my form this stuff's going to happen and it's then going to forward uh, my request onto the JSP that I've just written uh, to generate the output. Let's see if that happens. So here's, uh, let's reload this and room, one, two, three, four, message, doesn't matter at this stage because uh, my, my JSP that I'm going to forward to is just some fixed output. Let's click submit and see what happens. And I get problem accessing JSP proj, create message, reason not found, uh, why have I got a not found on create message? Because I haven't mapped it yet. I have not yet mapped this servlet. And so how am I going to map this servlet? Well, let's go and grab the mapping from example from the greeter servlet. And let's put this on the post message servlet. Importing the annotation. And so I've got at web servlet URL patterns equals and it needs to be create message. Okay. And let's go back, reload the page, and hopefully Gradle's had enough time to, re, uh, to restart my web application. Let's see if it works this time. And it did. So it made my post to my servlet, and my servlet forwarded the request on to my JSP uh, that's produced my response. Let's now put in a in view message. Uh, let's do something. Uh, let's allow it to actually view um, the message that, that there is for a particular uh, for a particular room. So how are we going to do that? Well, in this case, let, let's just put some code directly into the JSP to do this.
and I'm just going to put this into a text area because it's just a text message that I'm posting. And in this case, I don't even need to give it a name, uh, but I do need to put in a tag so that it'll appear on a different line. Okay. So in here, I'm going to want to put in something. And that something is likely to be a one of these inside these percent equals. And so I'm going to need to do a data store and get the message for a particular page. Where am I going to get that page from? Well, let's just go data store dot get instance dot get message of let's just go request dot get parameter of room and let's save that and if I go to view message dot jsp I should get a null in there to start with because here um, oops error in compilation uh, cannot find symbol variable data store why can't it find uh... so after a short pause to check the bug and uh, I'll explain what the bug is the reason it can't find the data store is quite interesting uh, if we go to the view message JSP here it is and when it's compiled we'll notice that uh, it's in a particular package it's in package org Apache JSP data store however is not in that package so we would need to import it uh, except, of course, that we can't import it because it's in the default package and we can't import the default package. So what we need to do to fix this is we need to put our code into a package. And this is a good reason why uh, you shouldn't generally just leave your code in the default package, uh, although it's an easy habit to do in a video. So let's put this into uh, a package called, let's just call it JSP proj because it's just a video. And let's now move those into it okay and let's pop back to the terminal uh, I'm going to do a stop cradle clean uh, because in doing the move I've um, just kind of moved some Java files from a particular directory but I'm not sure if the class files those generated will have been moved so I'm going to clean to remove the build directory and then I'm going to do a gradle app run to restart my project. Pardon it a moment while it uh, does its compile and enabling hot deployment with interval of one second and it is started. Okay. And so now let's just check that that has started view message and of course we'll still get the can't find the variable data store uh, except that now I should be able to uh, import it or at least just go JSP proj dot data store null pointer exception so we've managed to import our, our data store but we now have a null pointer exception happening and uh, here we have this kind of fun that uh, of course where, where is it happening it's happening somewhere in our service method uh, which is in some generated code and JSP server wrapper dot service etc etc caused by null pointer met method in and there's the underscore JSP service uh, method and let's see whether it's nice and puts the uh, the name of our JSP at the end no it doesn't put the line in our JSP at the end and so here we get a handy example of how uh, debugging in a JSP is a bit harder than debugging in Java and partly because the error messages that we get are going to refer to stuff in the generated Java code not in the JSP code uh, so somehow I would have to work out where that line number comes from well except of course that in this case I can work out where it comes from because it's doing concurrent hash map dot get on a key that isn't in there that's not terribly helpful is it to, to be just throwing a null pointer exception if there's uh, if there isn't one and so instead uh, what should we do for that let's go across to 
our data store and let's make our data store handle this and let's say on the get message let's say if messages oops messages dot contains key of room uh, oh except it's possibly complaining because actually I'm passing a null in for the actual room so let's validate our inputs else return null we'll just return null for now and so now if I load that up I get another message package JSP proj does not exist let's just retry that again for a moment here we go Sorry, that last error message was a an artifact of Gradle in the background restarting my server for me automatically and I, I made a request at a time that it was in an indeterminate state, I think. So look, the message for room is below null because there, there's, there's nothing in there at the moment. Okay, so now let's go and see whether uh, putting a message, if we put a message in, whether it's there when we go and look for the message. So let's go to create message. Room one, two, three, four. This is my message. Submit. Message for room, well, I've not yet put the message number in there, uh, has been posted. Let's go to view message.jsp room equals one, two, three, four. Is it there? Yes, it is. And I'm getting a, a, a space beforehand because in my JSP file, uh, this white space here is turning up in the output. If I delete that and I delete that, oops, then hopefully it won't. Except, of course, I'll get null again because the server will restart. And so, oh no, sorry, because it's just a JSP, the JSP gets compiled without restarting the server. So Jetty has recompiled the JSP. It's only if I change the server class that Gradle will need to uh, recompile and restart my uh, my project. Uh, so so the, the message is obviously being preserved, but we can kind of demonstrate something else that's uh, a little bit uh, risky about putting unexpurgated uh, user entered data straight into HTML. Um, so let's go back to create message and show how we have a, a, a little um, cross-site scripting problem. So one, two, three, four, and let's slash text area and let's go script type equals javascript um, window dot alert of boo and then oh shall we open another text area Okay, so I've now actually just put some HTML in there, and okay, it's been posted. And now, if I go to view message uh, with room one two three four, what's going to happen? And in here, I've got two text areas. Why have I got two text areas? Well, if I were to inspect the HTML, I've inserted some. JavaScript uh, tags in here and as it happens I seem to have mis um, I, I, I seem to have miswritten some stuff in there so that that's not actually done at a window dot alert of boo uh, but never mind uh, nonetheless it's demonstrated the problem that uh, because I am just inserting raw user input into the page that raw user input could be some html and it could interfere with the html of my page so if i'm going to do that i i'm going to need to uh, escape or somehow sanitize um, the text or the html that i'm putting in there probably if i'm putting it in a text box and just expecting this to be text i should just escape all of the less thans uh, etc so that it just ends up as being text 
But so there, there we have a demonstration of, um, so we, we, we've got it to the point that we've got messages being created, they're being stored in our, uh, in our singleton data structure and um, the JSP is forwarding on. And there's lots, lots more cleanup, of course, that I should do to this uh, in terms of improving the code and in terms of we don't really just want to say your the message for room ZZZ is below and the message posted could also be much, much more helpful. So lots, lots more to do uh, to do with this. But hopefully this video has uh, helped show you the uh, the plumbing of a very simple web application uh, with JSPs. One of the problems that you'll notice with JSPs, however, is that although we can kind of raw insert here is some Java code in here, we haven't really got a, got a component structure here. We haven't got a structure for saying, and at this stage, I want to put in my user profile widget and I want to define my user profile widget somewhere else. Um, we haven't got ways of abstracting uh, the, the structure of our UI. And that's the sort of thing that um, Java Server Faces is going to cover. And this stuff is all getting generated uh, on the server and it's just being put out as HTML that's set up to the, uh, sent up to the browser. So um, if anything is going to change in the browser, we're going to need to make a request back down to the server and get some more HTML. Uh, and so with many modern applications, we might actually like to do our rendering in the browser from JavaScript and instead make um, JSON uh, REST calls, so uh, make calls for data down to the server instead of calls for HTML down to the server. And to do that, you might use frameworks like AngularJS, which we'll also see in the other videos.